Hi there, hello. There are lots of video tutorials out there, brilliant ones, which tell you how to model this or that. A cigarette, a car, the tire of a car, a saddle, a bicycle wheel, um, a chair, whatever. Um, I don't want to brag here, but I'm choosing three methods, totally different methods to build a table. It's all trivial, really, but it tells us something very important. There are many, many ways to achieve a certain result. And um, you will be surprised how different the methods are to create a table. And still, the result is pretty much the same. Okay, the standard one is this. You go to polygon modeling and you create a polygon cube. You scale it in this direction because it's going to be the top of the table. And um, you need subdivisions down there. There are several ways to create them uh, in order to make the legs, to extrude the legs, basically. Uh, you go here to polycurve and uh, uh, increase this value, subdivision width and depth by, well, 2 up to 9, maybe. And now you go to the bottom of the of the plane of the cube, uh, choose faces, and select four of them. That's why we want to extrude the legs. These four. Don't pick ones at the top; will confuse everything. This is the icon for extrusion. You find it uh, somewhere under the mesh uh, tools as well. I'm so much used to this icon now that I extruded. Um, if you extruded just a little bit like this and extrude it again, uh, it gives you more flexibility for the future, for future animations, for example, or the deformations, which I'll show you in a second. So um, we repeat this command and instead of clicking here again, I just can type the key G, which means, I guess, go, which repeats the last command. So it's, there's another extrusion waiting. I just have to extrude it. Do the same thing. I pressed G and I extrude it and so on. I think that's fine. Now I have my chair. This is totally uh, wonderful and done in a few seconds. Uh, of course, you can make the legs thin, thinner, etc. And now you can go to deformation if you like. If you don't want to have a straight forward rectangular table. We'll go to, for example, linear shape and uh, what didn't we have in the last couple of tutorials? The squash maybe. The squash squashes the table in this axis. You can change the axis, etc. The squash uh, deformation is uh, very easy to handle. Uh, why, why does it not squash anything? Because the factor is set to zero. Now we can squash the table like this. And this is the table for the dwarfs. And this is the table for the queen, and maybe it's a stool now, uh, whatever. You can do this asymmetrical, asymmetrically, if you like, uh, by rotating this thing. And uh, it's all intact because we have flexible legs and uh, we have a flexible, uh, more or less flexible top. Okay, so that's number one. So let's create a new scene now. And now we'll create the same thing with NURP surfaces. Uh, we start with a cube again and in the NURPS world the cube as you see here in the outliner is not one object it's just a group it pretends to be one object but only in the polygon world it is one object. In the NURPS world you cannot create a, a cube like this uh, from uh, one NURP surface. That's why we have lots of surfaces here. The subsurfaces for example, this one or that one. But all in all, we can deal with this um, object now. And uh, what we'll do, we move it up. We'll scale it like we did before. Uh, you see, when you have the scaling tool, it's the same with the rotation and uh, translation tool. Uh, when I uh, use this uh, little symbol here, the yellow one, which is in the horizontal plane, I scale the uh, the table top in this direction. Okay, I'll make it a little bit thinner. Uh, keep in mind we're scaling the group. 
we're not scaling the individual parts down there. It doesn't matter for this purpose, but it's Im very important to know, really. Um, for example, if you want to texture this, uh, the, the whole table top, uh, you are uh, asked to texture the whole thing or just single subsurfaces, whatever. Um, and the legs, of course, uh, the same thing. Uh, we can scale them up, make them thinner, scale them even further up, like this. And it's currently sitting in the middle. Um, let's go to the top window and go to the wireframe mode so we see where we can place it. Uh, this is, um, of course, a group again. You see it in the outline, it's called NURBS Cube 2. We could call it our leg number one, whatever. We duplicate it, Control D. We're not duplicating single surfaces, we're duplicating the group. We uh, duplicate this one as well, move it here, duplicate it here as well. You could use uh, key snapping here uh, in order to place them precisely or use the attribute editor here. But uh, for our purpose, this is perfectly all right. And this is our NURBS object, which is a NURBS um, table consisting of many, many um, individual separate faces, like this one here, for example. is the front of the right rear leg, for example. We can now, of course, combine all them together and convert them into a polygon uh, in order to make it uh, easier to handle. Let's do this, modify, convert NURBS to polygons. And we just use the defaults, which are not uh, totally perfect for here, uh, because the triangles are not ideal for the for the table. But now it's several polygons, uh, because uh, the tr uh, conversion process converted each single surface into uh, a polygon surface. Now we can uh, combine them. So now this is the object we we are dealing with, this one, and now it's a polygon object where we can uh, use all manipulations like deformations, of course. And uh, let's go for the linear sign, for example, the sign function. And of course, the amplitude is zero again. And now we can increase the amplitude. Uh, what we see here down in the, in the <laughs> behind that is, is, is the old, um, is the NURBS uh, cube here, which we can, of course, I think the other NURBS here, delete. So now we have the sine function deformed polygon table, which originated from a NURBS surface. It's a quite a lovely, um, lovely object here. Um, remember, you can only do this in the polygon world uh, this easily with this high resolution and uh, with uh, no gaps in between because now it's really one object, the leg, uh, the legs plus the plus the top uh, of the uh, of the table. Whereas in the NURBS world, you deal with individual little uh, surfaces, which is m much more complex to deform, really. OK, new uh, scene and um, you might think this is a bit odd, but it isn't. Um, it's actually quite nice. Um, you create a, a polygon cube and you make it big because it's going to be the outline of our table. Now we duplicate it, control D, and we scale it in this direction and make it slightly smaller. Actually, we can move it down a bit like this and scale it up a bit like this and like this. I think you can see what I mean. Let's duplicate this one, Control D, and now we rotate it and we use the um, attribute editor for this because we want to rotate it precisely. This is sort of uh, uh, feeling wise but now 90 degrees is the perfect value and now we select this object this is our first cube and then whatever uh, uh, selection order this one and this one 
So the first one is the one where we want to cut the two things out here. Now we go to Mesh, Booleans, that's covered in another tutorial, and Difference. Because with di uh, we're building the difference, we're saying the first um, cube minus, that's the difference, the other two. It's not easily deformable because it has so little geometry. It's ideal for a computer game. It has very little po uh, amount of polygons, really, like a sort of maybe 20 maximum. Bye.